for new aspiring leaders, we need to make sure that they understand the distinction between managing as a manager focuses on the day-to-day -day tasks and processes. You manage tasks, you um, focus on the short-term goals. You do not have to be in the leading position to lead people. Right, well, I think oh, that growth mindset uh, is something very important and what you're saying is even before becoming or getting into a leadership role, start thinking uh, yourself, be aware and start thinking, preparing for those and uh, be aware of your communication skills and keep investing in yourself. Hello and welcome to Mentorship Masterminds, the PMI podcast where we deep dive into the world of leadership, networking and professional development. I'm your host Mahesh Deshpande and I'm excited to bring another episode of Mentorship Masterminds where I'll be talking to an industry leader or a seasoned mentor and try to unravel the stories that have shaped them, the strategies that have helped them succeed and learn few nuggets of wisdom from our masterminds. In today's episode, we are going to talk about unlocking your leadership potential. To talk to us about this topic, we have with us Geeta Radar. Geeta is a certified coach. She is a mentor with the PMI San Francisco Bay Area chapter, has been coaching uh, and mentoring leaders in the tech industry, and is a friend. I've, I've, we know each other for more than two years now through the mentorship program. Geeta, thank you for joining us on Mentorship Masterminds. Thank you. It, it's a pleasure to have you today. Thank you for inviting me and having me here. So, uh, Geeta, today we are going to talk about leadership and how do our next generation leaders who are the audience for this podcast uh, embark on their journey for leadership. Before we talk about leadership, our audience would like to know more about you, about your story, uh, if you could talk about your journey and what made you pivot into career coaching, into leadership coaching for tech professionals? Absolutely. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, it's a pleasure to be part of the PMI chapter for several years now. Um, great opportunities and connections that it provided for me personally and professionally. Um, I'm happy to share my story. Um, I uh, am coach, as you mentioned, leadership development coach and executive coach specializing in tech industry. And I uh, help emerging leaders and mid-level managers transform into confident and influential leaders. I transitioned to this role um, approximately three years ago after almost 20 year career in, in software development. Um, I'm a certified project manager, PMP certified project manager. And um, I started my career almost 20 years plus, plus 20 years ago at, from quality assurance tester, mm -hmm. and then um, senior business analyst, and then moved up to management of global virtual teams. My specialty was um, HR outsourcing systems um, for Fortune 500 companies. And um, um, to, for the past 10, 8 to 10 years of my uh, career in the software development, I was leading global virtual teams, large implementation, specializing in testing, release management. Toward the end of that chapter of my life, um, I wanted to reassess my next career step. Uh, career step. I worked uh, for almost 20 years for the same company, so there were not too many shifts and moves in my career. Um, and I was thinking, what should I do for my next stage of my career? And um, I was. I understood that my passion lies with people more than technology. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to help people, develop people, build their successful career, become successful uh, leaders in the tech industry, 
and um, I decided um, to transition and got my certification in executive coaching, integral coaching, and combined together with my experience and expertise, now I work with leaders in tech and help them uh, move from individual contributor to their first leadership roles and then move to the mid-level leadership roles, evolve as leaders. Um, it's also important for me to mentor not only part of but not to only work with them part of my practice coaching and consulting mentorship is a way for me to give back uh, to um, new grads new leaders um, immigrants and minority groups that need help in those crucial moments um, I remember when I started my career, we were just chatting about it. Um, I was a new immigrant, new, a new immigrant in the United States. Um, English was my second language. Um, I came, I, I'm a first generation college graduate in my family. And um, um, even though I had a lot of support in my family, um, I did not have role models in my family who climbed the corporate ladder, who could um, help me with an advice how to navigate career and build a career path, successful career path. And um, I, I have done it, I went through that, but there were a lot of obstacles and hurdles. The only advice that my parents gave me, and unfortunately it didn't work well, <laughs> was work very hard and the work will speak for itself, which is the worst advice ever. Uh, well, they tried, they, it was a positive for their perspective. And the second advice was your manager will take care of you if you do hard work. So it worked for a while, but then it stopped. I think it worked in one era, it doesn't work Exactly, today. so they tried to help me and I have done exactly that for the first probably five, six years of my career and I worked really hard. Uh, but when I understood that I was passed over promotions multiple times and my peers who I started together, um, they uh, got promotion, advanced their careers, and I still stayed in similar roles, I understood that the formula does not work, that something needs to change, and that's when I went on pursuit of understanding, so how do you build a professional career in the corporation? How do you climb the corporate ladder? So with years of experience and many mistakes, I want to contribute back and I mentor a lot through the PMI chapter and also personally within my community. So this is why, how we met and um, it's an honor and to be here. I'm, I'm glad you uh, shared your story I, I could totally relate to it when you said English is your not your first language. And for me, English is my fourth language. Oh, it's my so third. So <laughs> we were saying it's my third. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and also about mentorship, you are uh, one of the most popular mentors oh. uh, in the PMI San Francisco uh, Bay Area chapters mentorship program. The feedback that we receive from your mentees about you has been so positive and the impact that you're thank having you. on the mentees is remarkable. Thank so you. So thank you for what you're doing and uh, for joining us to share and talk about how our audience can focus on unlocking their leadership potential. Gita, thank you for uh, sharing your journey and about your experiences as an immigrant and talking about leadership and mentorship. Before we get on to the topic, one, one more question personal is who is a role model for you? Who is a leadership role model that you look up to? Um, so, on a personal level, in my career, um, I uh, had several, depending on the skills that I wanted to develop within myself. Um, I had a f my first manager, he had amazing communication skills and he gave me an example of how I wanted to be in skills that I was lacking um, and what I need to develop. I had a very good mentor for project management 
at my later stage of the career and he told me how to manage projects. Um, so we work very closely. Um, in general, I tend to seek mentors in a specific area or skill that I need to develop. Um, so, but in, when you look, if you're looking at the public figures, famous people, I mean, um, I enjoy following Elon Musk because he's a very strategic as well as operational leader, hands-on leader. That combination of qualities always attracts me uh, because people either one strong area or another. Um, inspirational speakers, yeah. right? So Steve Jobs, he could inspire both uh, customers and employees with his new visions and his reveals of new products was an awe experience for everyone. So the richness of the language and how he inspired people, that uh, absolutely inspi inspires me to be at least closer to that level of skill. But um, yeah, so the trick for me, what I learned in my journey is whatever goal whatever skill I need to develop, I will look for people who are good at it, and I will just observe if they're public figures, and I observe the qualities and the attributes and the techniques that they're using, or I'll find a mentor in that area and literally speak and develop relationship to ask questions and to get that guidance. That's powerful. Uh, whenever I ask this question to our mentors, the most one common theme I re realize is there is always someone at a, in a public space, mm -hmm. um, uh, an industry leader, a politician, mm -hmm. or an actor, and there's always someone personal, yes. right? It can be your father, it can be your first manager, or it can be someone who has mentored you uh, along the way. Yes. So, thank you for sharing. Absolutely. So, uh, Geeta, today's topic is unlocking your leadership potential. So. This podcast, when we started, we started with a focus on our next generation leaders who are trying to move up the career ladder, trying to move up into leadership roles. So the topics that we have decided and are, have been discussing with our mentors, with uh, industry leaders on the podcast have been on those lines. So when it comes to leadership, unlocking your leadership potential, the way uh, I envision doing this and the questions which I'm going to ask, uh, we want to divide it into three parts. Mm -hmm. uh, where the first one I want to focus on aspiring leaders, mm -hmm. uh, uh, people who are uh, say engineers or uh, teachers who are trying to move into a leadership role, who, are, who may be subject matter experts but still haven't been in, an, in a leadership role or do not have uh, today have that capacity to be in that leadership role but they aspire to it. Mm -hmm. The second category is about those who have already landed into a leadership role and are trying to figure it out. And the third part of this podcast is where I want to touch about few nuggets of leadership uh, skills and capabilities and so forth. Okay. okay. So Geeta, uh, today's topic is about unlocking leadership potential. And the way we want to go about it is I want to divide it into three parts. Part one is where we want to talk about aspiring leaders. Uh, people who may be subject matter experts, engineers who are trying to get into leadership roles but I have not reached there and are aspired to go there. Uh, the second part is about people who have already landed up in leadership role and are trying to work things out and see if we figure out how to move up and manage up and manage down and so forth. And the third pillar is where I want to talk about uh, leadership nuances, skills, capabilities that are needed. Are we okay with that? Absolutely. Okay, so let's get on with it. Uh, first part on aspiring leaders, right? Before we even uh, dig into the skills and capabilities, there is one question that always comes up about leaders versus managers, right? And uh, this may be sound as a bookish question, but I think it helps to clarify uh, and I would like to hear your perspective on manager versus leaders. Absolutely. So yes, unfortunately, it used interchangeably too much, but for new aspiring leaders, we need to make sure that they understand the distinction between managing as a manager focuses on the day-to-day -day tasks and processes. 
You manage tasks. You um, focus on the short-term goals. You um, maintain status quo. You um, focus on efficiency and how effective you execute the task that in front of you. That's managing, and it's a lot of skills. It's the, the management skills, you have to be experienced and expert in that. And then there is a leading. Leaders, they lead people. That's the focus already on people. How do you inspire? How do you motivate? How do you empower people to reach the goals? And the, and the goals are long-term goals vision for the organizations, long-term vision, long-term goals, aligning the goals of the team with the organizational goals, and then inspiring, communicating those goals and vision to inspire and empower people uh, to reach that potential, to reach that outcome. So leadership encompass, encompasses both management as well as leaders leading, managing and leading. So leaders that, excellent leaders, they combine both skills in addition to some qualities that you like executive presence and other things that you need to uh, combine in the same formula. But there is definitely a distinct, uh, distinct quality to managing and leading. Okay, that's powerful. So it's managing plus something more, right? Plus your people side of it. Yes, skills. people skills. People skills, okay. Yes. So for those who are in this position today, who are trying to gain some leadership skills, what is your advice on what, is, what are some of the strategies or tactics they can employ to make themselves visible or to start subconsciously preparing for a leadership role and move towards uh, the journey of becoming a manager or a leader? Yes. That's, um, yes, there's a lot you can do. You do not have to be in the leading position to lead people. Right. And if you are interested to step into the leadership journey, which starts long time before you become a leader, there are many things that you can initiate in your career. First of all, you have to communicate to people that you're interested in that position, in that journey. Because a lot of people trying to get there in silence, in silo, and then they're surprised when they, the opportunities are not given, are not there. You have to communicate that you're interested to become a leader. So the management, the upper management, your peers are aware of that. Then you have to adopt a growth mindset which means you are stepping into a journey of continuous improvement. You have to continuously learn and improve your skills, and it never stops, it, even when you become the leader. You learn, you ask, seek feedback, and you improve more, and you always explore new ways, perspectives, and uh, best practices whether it's by you learning through experience, whether you're learning through formal channels like getting certifications and education in certain area. So growth mindset, always to pursue new knowledge, new experiences. Um, and then you have to become proactive and engaging in actual work. So it's not only doing your work and going home achieving your results and be done. You have to engage in the company with your team to collaborate together, to work volunteer or ask to work on cross-functional projects and team, stay curious on what other roles and what other functions um, are working on and what are their obstacles, priorities. So constantly engage and while you're engaging, you are networking within and outside of your organization, which is a critical step in building your leadership journey, leadership success. You build alliances, you build deep relationships with people, you um, offer help because it takes years 
until you get to the point where you are in the project and you need to pick up a phone and ask for help. Mm. Or you need to pick up a phone and ask for a favor. Um, so this is years of developing strong relationships, strong alliances. You need to learn organizational structure, values, you un understand the politics within your organization, who are the main decision maker, who do you need to build strong, again, relationship and alliances, and um, being a team player, collaborator, be a solution-minded person. So you don't only look for problems, you always bring solutions to the table. Not necessarily they're going to be implemented, but at least you're going to be perceived as a person that tries to solve problem and not only find the problems. So those are the things, I mean, you need to invest in your skills, right? So communication skills, always to invest in your practice, learn, take classes, um, invest in your education, take certification like the PM, uh, PMP certification. So people see that you are serious about your career. You take it seriously and then you show by example others. So those are the steps that you can take proactively to step on that leadership journey. And when you achieve those goals, you set clear goals, you measure your progress, you achieve and celebrate success, that's what shows people that you are serious about your career. That's powerful. I think oh, that growth mindset uh, is something very important. And what you're saying is even before becoming or getting into a leadership role, start thinking uh, yourself be aware and start thinking preparing for those and uh, be aware of your communication skills and keep investing in yourself yes. with all those five six points that you made I think this is really powerful in your uh, uh, as a, a follow-up to that question in your experience as a career coach as well as a mentor with the mentorship program do you have any success stories where you have seen people who have uh, followed some of these have developed on these skills and moved into uh, a leadership role or have prepared themselves into a leadership role? Anything that you would like to share? Absolutely. Um, I, had, um, I had a client who was an excellent individual contributor mm -hmm. and um, he was, there was a shift within organization and he was moved to a first, his first leadership um, role and he was lost. So uh, obviously there was, it, it happened too fast. The, the company didn't provide the necessary training. He was getting mentorship from upper management, but it wasn't enough. So um, he hired me to assist him. So we worked a lot on his visibility. And we literally um, walked through exercises, how to advocate for yourself, how to advocate for your team, how to communicate goals, and how to be um, a predictable leader from a communication perspective. Because when you become a leader, people look up to you for any communication. You are the, the link between the organization to the team. All the messages filter through you, in and out. So we worked a lot on his communication skills, and we practice a lot, concise, clear communication, strong agendas, repeatable meetings, um, um, how ad adaptive communication, mm -hmm. what, how do you communicate the same message to your team and peers versus upper management. So communication was a very strong area of improvement for him. And um, that and emotional intelligence. We worked on how to stay resilient, how to um, the stress and burnout because the responsibilities grow so fast. Yeah. And then a lot of people struggle with giving up the old role because they're so good at it. And that letting go and delegate and how to stay resilient from first steps in leadership roles when, yes, you will see a lot of setbacks. 
which is normal and people expect it. Nobody expects you to be perfect on your first role, but the resilience. So to work on that resilience, communication skills, emotional intelligence, that would help him to, be, to gain his confidence, to get the first uh, accomplishments, wins, and get the credibility and trust from his team. So that builds up slowly, but those are practices that you need to implement step by step. And first of all, you need to talk it through in this confidence space where you feel free to express your concerns, your uh, emotions, and then get the proper feedback and then practice those before you go to the world and implement that. It's powerful. Thank you for sharing all the tactics as well. <laughs> I'm here to help, so obviously, that's what coaching was. It's a very objective, safe place um, where you can come in and literally have either a monologue with yourself and reflections or have the sounding board of somebody who is in your court, advocates for your success, but at the same time objective without any agenda. So I can be your advocate and your devil's advocate at the same time and help you. Because if you think about it, when we work in our life, whether at home, personal or professional, all the people we communicate with about our work and goals have some kind of agenda. And it's hard to find a neutral environment where you can sit and reflect on certain challenges and situation or hesitation to set a new goal, a risk, to take a risk. And you want somebody objective to talk to. Yeah. And that's where coaching comes mm -hmm. helpful and beneficial to people. Because even mentors at your work, they still have an agenda for organizational goals and values. Yep, so having an external coach yes. always. Helps. Yes, yes. So uh, that's a good segue to my next part, mm -hmm. which is about somebody who has uh, landed into a leadership role, right? They got promoted, maybe may have got a title with a leader in it, or probably are in a managerial role where uh, they may not have the title of leader, but they are expected to be a leader, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the qualities and skills that have helped them get up to here, become a successful individual contributor, and be, get promoted till here may not help them grow further, right? There, there is always a distinction between uh, what are the skills and qualities that have help you excel as an IC versus what are going to help you excel as a leader. Yes. Right. So it's a very uh, a challenging situation. So what's your take, and uh, how do you uh, think are people who have landed in those roles? How do they go about uh, tackling the challenges? So that's a good question because the transition first start with your mindset. Because before you were managing your work, you were responsible for your work. And now you're responsible for the people who do the work. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a big distinction here. So um, what do they need to do to be successful? And I think the first thing, again, you have to work on the mindset. There are a lot of challenges. Sometimes people have um, with the mindset transition. How do I do that? I'm, I'm so good as an individual contributor. I can do my work faster. Um, different skill set you work with in the team. So um, for, from my perspective, mindset and building relationship honest relationship is the first step is in the move from individual contributor to the management role because um, you have to connect to people to build trust being authentic and so people can actually hear and connect with you you understand their needs your job is to help them and empower them. So uh, clear communication skills, 
work on your communication skills and initially to start working on building connection with your team members, which is regular one-on-one, -on -one, team meetings, regular updates, what's happening in the company, what's happening within our project, what are the top priorities, celebrate successes, um, connection, touch points. And the more you have those, the more credibility and the more trust you gain from your team. Also, it's very important that you have a results-oriented uh, mindset, which means you add value. And it's very important to show, not in, in, immediately as you come to the role, like after a month, choose some priorities after you connected with people and you understood what their needs, what their main obstacles, how you can help them. Choose first two, three priorities that are more or less not complex and do it. Set the goals, monitor your progress, and celebrate the success. Ask for help. Because if people see that you bring value to the team, that you are a results-oriented person, then the credibility is built naturally. And then you connect to people and they start trusting you more and you have more influence within your team. So mindset and relationship is critical. Communication skills, improving your communication skills, it's critical in the first stage. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Geeta. Uh, you touched base upon credibility, building credibility and uh, having that confidence and all the tactics that you mentioned. I think those are powerful, which our audience would appreciate, uh, which you went down in detail. A follow-up to that is uh, building credibility and confidence is important. At the same time, it's also now you have to manage up and manage down. Right? It's not just about managing your team, but also about managing, being accountable to the leadership above you who, who expects something, some uh, results out of you. So you talked about uh, being result oriented as well as being uh, over communicative to the team. Right? But do you want to talk more or deep dive more on how to manage expectations with managing up as well as managing down? Yes, you always in your career have to focus on how to manage up, which uh, sometimes I hear, especially during our mentorship program, it's a new concept to people. And um, everybody thinks that they have to, once they become a manager, they have to manage down their team. But you always have to manage up, even if you're not a manager. So your manager has the same similar team and has their manager within the organizational structure. So your awareness of the goals of your manager and um, their expectations, their communication style is critical for your success as a leader. So as a manager, your goal is to develop deep relationship with your manager to understand their communication style, their preferences, their expectations, their goals, and how your success will be measured against what criteria, and make adjustment to your leadership while you work with your uh, manager to make sure that the upper management receive what they need. Mm -hmm. So whether it's certain updates in certain format, in certain attendance in some strategic meetings. Um, your job is to make your manager's job easier. And if you remember that, that your manager is a human being, the same like you, has a lot of responsibilities on their plate, and you are working to make their life easier, then the flow and relationship is, the flow is easier, the relationship is stronger, and you're gonna create an advocate for your career planning. So managing up is adapting your communication styles, your workflow in relationship to your management or upper management. This is also part of the executive presence that I'm also working with my clients 
executive presence involves a lot of about a lot about communication with upper management, which is completely different than it was your peers and with your team. Knowing how to present the same problem or the same message to your upper management versus your team is a critical skill because people are going to advocate more for you. You're going to get more resources. Yep. Um, and um, also your image, your confidence. Image is as reputation, image also as your personal image, uh, how you package yourself, how you present yourself, the perception of you. Right? So what associated with your name? And that comes also when you go manage down and manage up. So a lot of it goes together, part of your leadership skills. And you need to understand that the upper management has a lot to say. And they're going to also listen to feedback from your team. So manage up and manage down. I'm so glad you're sharing this. Uh, you're right when you say that people are more focused on managing down and team and now they are in a leadership role, they think it's about managing down. But managing that executive presence that you touched upon, I think that is also critical and our viewers will, appreci will truly appreciate what you just said. So uh, my next question is uh, in relation to the same uh, managing up and down. Uh, another aspect of this is you are probably new to a role or you get new into a new company as a leader, right? And you have existing team, some of them who were aspiring for that role who couldn't get there, right? Or probably there is also a team that uh, is reluctant to work with you. Mm -hmm. The team members are reluctant to work with you, right? There is resistance. The, the attitude of the team is like, you know nothing, John Snow kind of a thing, right? So uh, how does, someone who is newly into a leadership role manage this resistance? It is difficult and it's very common. Yes. It's very common. And um, to, to work with that, you have to start with connecting with people and understand you have to be, um, learn about the organization as I mentioned, organizational structure and then political structure within the team and then within the department and within the company. So relationship is critical part here. You need to create, your goal is to create alliances and deep relationship with decision makers in the team or department. Mm. And you need to slowly connect with them and employ the emotional intelligence tools as much as possible, which is active listening and um, to understand the perspective, the needs, the concerns of the people you work with. And if you develop deep relationship by understanding the key decision makers' concerns, and needs and you help them achieve what they need. So as I mentioned, results oriented. So two, three wins, small things that you can do to make sure to show, to, to gain credibility and gain trust that you're on the same page with them. And you develop that trust a little bit step by step. So they see that you are result oriented, you're listening, you're actively listening, you're managing your emotions, you are self-aware and you understand their perspectives, their emotions, you slowly will start gain respect and small wins. And if you gain respect of those key players, key decision makers and develop alliances with stakeholders, decision makers, then the word will spread. It takes time. But you have to have emotional skills, strength, resilience to deal with that because it's draining. It is hard. And you need to be very self-aware, understand your triggers, understand your emotions, understand your 
patterns of behaviors, like how do you behave in certain situations, so you can control it and react in the correct way and open mind to other people's emotions and perception and uh, perspectives. Thank you for sharing that. It's work, yes, <laughs> but it's a lot of practice. It's, yeah. You need to learn and practice. Uh, the more mentees that I talk to in part of mentorship program, this is one of the frequent questions that I get. So uh, thank you for sharing, sharing that. So let's move to our uh, last part of the podcast where we want to talk about our leadership traits, right? And you talked about decision making, you mentioned about emotional intelligence, uh, you spoke about uh, uh, cultural awareness. So uh, let's, if, if you can spend a few minutes on these topics. Uh, as a leader, how do I uh, work on my emotional uh, intelligence? Like, do you have any piece of advice? Let's start with emotional intelligence. Yes. I think that's the most important thing because um, emotional intelligence is about elevating self-awareness. It's getting to know yourself, controlling your emotions, understanding your emotions first, naming them, understanding your triggers and behavioral patterns. How do you react if certain emotion and a trigger comes in? Um, self-awareness and then also understanding emotions and behavioral patterns and triggers of others reading the room reading the situation understanding when somebody is triggered and how do you uh, handle that that's emotional intelligence and it's critical skill for successful leaders how do you develop that so um, the way I try to work with my clients on that is the first habit that you have to have is and develop consistent habit is reflection and journaling, self-reflections and journaling. And what I recommend every person is at the end of the day, work day, uh, spend 15 to 30 minutes journaling self-reflections. How did your day go? What were your wins? What were your challenges? Uh, what were your difficult conversations? How did you handle, how do you think you handled them? Uh, what would you do differently next time? How do you think um, the other person's perspective was on that conversation? What the assumptions that you made and the assumptions of other person? So deeply reflect on the situation that happened throughout the day. And every day it will be different. Maybe you had a difficult meeting or difficult conversation or you had an email that you didn't know how to approach and it took you an hour to write it. So reflect on that. And I uh, honestly, I can guarantee you in two weeks of doing it daily, you will understand yourself and your behavioral patterns so much better and in depth that you can already understand that certain situation might trigger you and how will you react and you will be in control. You can actually step out and take a deep breath and change the pattern of the behavior because you'll understand that you are in control instead of letting the situation carry you through the emotion, the, the situation carry you emotions through. So that reflections and journaling, definitely. Then we work on your conflict resolution skills definitely important how to deal with different types of conflicts how to conduct difficult conversations um, in addition to that um, you have to um, there are lots of books that you can read about emotional intelligence but we also work on um, breathing techniques mindful breathing how to decompress in a stressful situation or before you know you're going into a stressful situation. So it's a practice. So breathing techniques, how to stay present, um, improving your communication skills, how to clearly deliver your message, and then ask if the message was received the way you intended. 
to be understood because that's where majority of the conflicts uh, and assumptions come in and, and this is where communication skills, great communication skills come to play. So we work on your communication skills. So there are a lot of techniques and it's, uh, I introduce those techniques to my clients and then we practice them. We practice them a lot, then we role play, and then you take them to your work and implement them and come back with feedback. What worked, what didn't work, what needs to be adjusted. And that emotional intelligence, you work entire life, improve more and more, and you never reach the full. Because that's a skill that you grow and develop. But the main goal is to increase self-awareness, to get to know yourself, so you get control over your emotions and your behavioral patterns. And then you also learn how to read the room and how to read others. I'm so glad we are doing this podcast. I'm learning so much from you. <laughs> I'm glad. Uh, the second question on leadership skills uh, is about decision making. Okay. Uh, as a leader, you are expected to make decisions. And one phrase that has stuck with me is like, as you move up the career ladder, uh, as a leader, you get paid more not to make more decisions, but to make decisions that might have larger impact, right? So, uh, and people talk about these days a lot about data-driven decision making. Like I see so many resumes which says I am a data-driven decision maker. So, uh, I want you to touch base on that. Like talk about decision making, the importance of that, and uh, like. What does this data-driven decision making? If you want to touch base on that part as well, uh, if you could highlight some uh, pieces uh, of nuggets from your experience. Um, I think decision making is a critical skill, yep. regardless if you're a leader or not. And I think it's a skill that you learn. A lot of people are afraid to make a decision because they didn't have enough practice of making the decisions. And the more you practice that and you start from simple decisions when you have two options which one is better and then you implement decision making every day and as often as you can and um, you become better and better at that but the skill is is to make sure that you understand all the facts the facts are in front of you um, and you understand the goals, organizational goals, team goals, project goals, and you need to make a decision while analyzing the risks, taking into account uncertainties, consulting the proper experts, mm -hmm. allowing them to talk so you don't have to make the decisions, all of them by yourself, and then making the decision. And some of the misconceptions are that you're always good at decision making. It's not, it's not true. Leaders make a lot of mistakes. And the more you make mistakes, the, more, the better you become in decision making, you just correct yourself faster. So you have to become resilient and learn how to deal with setbacks because there are no failures, there are lessons learned. And you, this is the, as I explained, the framework for decision making, and you're gonna make mistakes, and people expect you to make mistakes because we're human and it's normal. But then, when you evaluate those mistakes and you create lessons learned, then you gain the experience. So next time, you will make a different decision in a similar situation. You'll consult different experts, or you'll account more risks that you didn't think of them before. And that's how you gain experience. So instead of shying away from decision making, from responsibility and accountability as a leader, you need to be in the mindset, forward thinking mindset and take that ownership. And yes, sometimes a lot on the line. So consult more people, get more expert and make the decision, but at the same time create contingencies and reevaluate the situation, change the decision 
fix the situation with lessons learned. You're already going to be in a better spot with more experience and lessons learned than you were yesterday. That's my approach to decision making. I can keep talking to you for <laughs> hours. I, I really like this conversation. Uh, but uh, in the interest of time, uh, we'll have to wrap up. I have last couple of questions for you. Sure. Uh, one topic that I want to touch base upon is the role of mentorship for uh, leaders to grow. Yes. Or for people aspiring to lead, get into leadership role. How do they approach that, right? So from a mentorship perspective, uh, I think everybody understands the power of mentoring, the power of mentors. But one of the questions we get frequently is, where do I find mentors who can help me in my career, right? Or my, uh, in my career path, in my journey. So what's your approach and what's your uh, reply to uh, those questions about mentorship? Where they're like, where do I get started? And what should I look out for in a mentor? Yeah. So where do you find them? Definitely in PMI chapter. <laughs> So that's the first step, but I'm subjective here. <laughs> so, but at the same time, um, always look for mentorship. And you can find it either within your organization, company, or outside. It can be your um, um, peer or cross-functional manager in a different department. It can be your neighbor who does something similar in a different company. Um, anyone who has the skill that you want to acquire or develop, approach them in your, within your network, whether within the company, organization you work, or outside, within professional network. If you see something that you admire and you want that quality or attribute and you don't know how to start, invite them first for a coffee or coffee chat on Zoom or just express your interest and admiration. Give them uh, a compliment. Everybody likes compliments. So if, some, if you come to somebody and says, I admire your communication skills. I've seen provide specific examples. I would love to learn the same similar skills. What would your advice be to me? And, and listen to that advice. And then you can offer, would you mind mentoring me in that area? They might say yes or no, depending on their capacity, interest, passion, and you can approach multiple people. So if you approach five or six, maybe one will say yes. But it's within your interest to put yourself out there because you need that. Yeah. And mentorship, it's also... Um, um, both way um, relationship. It's a two way communication. Two way communication, thank you. You can, um, you offer something, you might offer something that they need. Maybe they need help on some project. Maybe you have a skill that in exchange you're going to mentor the other person. So always get mentors, always put yourself out there. If you don't ask, you don't get. And there are plenty of organizations that do offer mentorship, like PMI mentorship, uh, PMI men, uh, chapter, San Francisco chapter, and w wonderful mentorship program. But absolutely, and you can have multiple mentors depending on different skills that you're looking to uh, develop. Thank you. Thank you, Gita. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, last question uh, for our audience who are trying to embrace their leadership potential. What's your one key takeaway from this podcast? And if you have any one or two actionable uh, insights that you actionable items which you want them to take away with, uh, can you give us your nuggets? Absolutely. So my big thing uh, that I advise everybody is if you're serious about climbing the corporate ladder, um, then you need to take charge of your career development. You have to be intentional. You have to set clear goals. You have to explore your industry for variety of skill set that are available or needs that are there. What is your passion? And understand 
set clear goals what you, how your next role might look like what are the skills necessary be realistic to assess your gaps and skills you need to acquire and learn that but don't expect anybody else to care about your career as much as you do don't leave it in the hands of hr of your managers of your team or your family members um, this is your job to create your development plan, aggressively find mentors, network with people, and achieve your goals that you set. So really take it seriously. So that's my main advice to everyone around. Um, immerse yourself in learning and continue with growth. There are so many resources available. I mean, you can lead you can read so many books leadership books from john maxwell and simon sinek emotional intelligence brene brown wonderful books listen to podcasts about leadership leadership podcasts and i think there's a management tools podcast very good um, there's a lot of platforms that are available uh, continuously to take classes and increase your expertise, take certification with PMI, um, learning, LinkedIn Learning offers so many courses, Coursera, and just step into the journey of growth and curiosity and improvement, professional and personal growth. And, and that will show the world that you are serious about your career development and you will see tangible results in your career. That's what I recommend to my... Gita, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Our audience, I'm sure, truly appreciate whatever you have shared. I have learned a lot and uh, if you are available, I would like to have a follow-up in second season. I have so many Absolutely. more topics to discuss with you. But thank you so much for joining uh, yeah. on this episode of Mentorship thank you Masterminds. Thank so for having me here. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Mentorship Masterminds. Today's topic of embracing your leadership potential, we learned a few nuggets of wisdom from our executive coach, Geeta. I hope this, these experiences, uh, these words of wisdom helped you move an inch closer towards your leadership aspirations. Keep listening into Mentorship Masterminds. We have some episodes coming related to embracing empathetic leadership, pivoting into project management, and developing your social capital. Keep listening to us and stay tuned to Mentorship Masterminds with me, your podcast host, Mahesh Deshpande. Until next time, keep inspiring and keep thriving.